a girl a running in a group. She had a high speed motor in a 44 coupe. She had a racing cam and a supercharge. Look at Buddy Hotter, Hotter, and Large. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. We'll get back to talking about what's going on in the, in the car world. I mean, the recalls are, are bad news. Well, this is more bad news, not terrible. But this guy from the Toyota Financial Unit is going to pay $60 million for illegal lending credit reporting misconduct. Oops. Toyota Motor Company's U.S.-based auto financing will pay $60 million in fines, $60 million in fines, restitution to settle a U.S. regulator's charges. It illegally prevented borrowers from canceling product bundles that increase their monthly car loan payments. Ah, oh, come on. You talk about a captive audience. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau on Monday, that's not a good one to have on your butt either, said Toyota Motor Credit will pay a $12 million civil fine and $48 million in harm customers. Oh, some people are going to get some money out of the deal. The company did not admit to or deny liability in, agree, in agreeing to settle. Oh, they never do. Toyota Motor Credit, based in Plano, Texas, provides financing for people who buy vehicles at Toyota dealerships with nearly 5 million customer accounts as of October 2022. They, uh... <clears throat> According to the Consumer Financial Protection Board, CFPD, we have a lot of acronyms in this show, Chuck. I don't know. <laughs> thousands of consumers complained to Toyota, thousands, to Toyota Motor Credit that dealers had lied about whether these products were tech more mandatory or rushed to the pap- rushed the paperwork so that they wouldn't realize how much they were paying. Oh good. Oh, you got to have this, you got to have that, and here's what it's going to make your payment. Crazy. But too many too many people, the young people today and other people, come in and they want to buy a car, and the first thing they say is, what's my note? How much I got to pay a month? That's all they care about. And if it's within specs, they'll buy it. They don't care what they paid for. Toyota Motor Credit also accused was also accused of falsely telling credit reporting agencies that borrowers had missed payments and failing to promptly correct negative information for more than 27,500 borrowers, customers, which means they're lying to get to get your credit in the toilet. They're putting your credit in the toilet with lies. That's uh, like the, the game Clue, Mr. So-so did it in the library. Yeah, with the club or whatever, I don't know. All right, now, Chuck, are you aware of this one? Hyundai is going to sell vehicles on Amazon. Are you ready for this? Yeah, let's talk about that. Amazon's got to go out and buy some car haulers, it looks like. Yeah. If they're going to deliver them. Uh, Hyundai will sell vehicles on Amazon next year, 2024. Hyundai said it will begin the sales of its full portfolio of vehicles via the Amazon shopping platform in January enabling consumers to complete the full car shopping and buying experience with a familiar digital environment. This is for the young people that want to order a car on their phone. Right. Well, I got to tell you, uh, this this whole thing, I would say try and send that back or tell them it was damaged in shipment. <laughs> a Hyundai spokesperson told Automotive News, the program will begin with 18 dealers with a broader rollout to follow in the second half of the year. The move is part of a collaboration between, collaboration, whatever I call it, Hyundai and Amazon to bring innovative experiences to customers. In other words, let the kids buy a car on the phone. Hyundai Motor Company CEO Jehun Cheng said that the partnership unlocks incredible opportunities. Yeah, for Hyundai, for the automaker as it expands its lineup, grows the sales network, and transitions to electrification. Hyundai will be the first auto manufacturer to use Amazon's digital retailing tool to conduct the full end, end-to-end transaction. So people will be shopping for Hyundais 
on Amazon. But what's interesting, though, is it says that the pricing would be set by the local dealers, and you also have the option of picking up at the local dealer. So this almost sounds like just ordering from your dealer's website with extra steps. Well, yeah. But the the, the convenience a, of being on Amazon. Well, we have a middleman here, though, with right. Amazon. Well, now you have a question about financing. Are you going to go on the, is Amazon going to have an F&B guy? You're going to pick the car F and they'll send you over to the Amazon F&B page? I so mean, Amazon's going to turn into a bunch of crooks, too? Well, that's not, well I mean, I, uh, but I'm just saying. Get like, the F&I guy, yeah. Or the F&I guy. That's I always call me F&B guy. Okay, so the F&I guy on Amazon. So well, how's that going to work? finance and deceit. Okay. You were right, F and D. I don't know how that's going to work. I have no clue. But I know if I go to buy a car, it's not going to be on Amazon. I'm going to go look at it. I'm going to go sit in it. I might even want to drive it before I spend $50,000 on Wait, a car. Wait, you, you want to test drive a car before Amazon delivers it? That's a radical thought. I know. Isn't that radical? Crazy. And the, you want to have your local guy check it out for you before young, you buy you it? You know, and I, young people today are so naive when it comes to buying cars. And this is not going to work any more than, than buying it out over the internet or going to uh, Elon Musk's Tesla website. And you know, you you got to look at the car. You got to see if you're going to be comfortable in it. You got to you got to sit in it. You got to feel it. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck with this car. As expensive as they are, you're going to be stuck with them for a long time. Yeah. A minimum of six, seven years. And you can get a ten year note, but by ten years, that car will be. Don't tell me that the battery is not going to be shot in by 10 years. Don't tell me I'm not going to have to buy a battery. In the first 10 years, I don't think so. I think I'm going to have to buy one in 10 years, depending on the miles you put on, of course, and where you live. If you live in a cold climate, your battery is going to get charged and get, and get dead in, within hours. I mean, it's not going to be a big deal. Uh, well, the auto industry is pondering this little digital go, out, go around with Amazon. Hyundai will be the first automaker to use Amazon's digital retailing tool, blah, blah, blah. We already know that. We talked about that. Buyers will be able to tap Amazon's digital shopping platform to select and finance, oh, and finance a vehicle, so they can finance it through Amazon. Oh, God. The sales will be channeled through local dealerships. We've learned through the pandemic how customers are expecting to have a similar experience when buying a car or when they buy something else online. Jose Munoz, Munoz, Hyundai North Motors, North America CEO, told American uh, Automotive News during the Las Vegas or Los Angeles Auto Show this last week. Now I got to worry that my wife's going to buy a new Hyundai on Prime Day or whatever. Oh, it yeah, is. you're going you're gonna to come home and there's going to be an Amazon truck outside. It'll be a big Amazon box. Like, yeah. What's in the giant look, box in, in the, the box. garage? Honey, look what I bought. I saved so much. You didn't save nothing, honey. Nothing, they they had free shipping. So free shipping. Couldn't turn yeah, that yeah. down. Yeah, they're going to do free shipping? Wow. Pick up at your local dealer, it says. You can. I, I don't know if I want, I don't even know if I want to get involved in that. The announcement immediately raised questions among some retailers and industry investors. Lithia, the, the nation's largest auto retail dealership group, where they own a lot of different companies, a lot of different dealers, saw its stock fall 5.1%. In response this week, the stock price for number two auto for that number two auto group, Auto Nation, slid six percent. Online auto sales, referral service, True Cars stock dropped seven percent. So everybody's taking a bath with this, except of course Amazon. Amazon never takes a bath. They they got a stink by now. They never bathe. The digital retail giant is starting is starting with the Hyundai brand. Amazon executives told Automotive News, but they expect to partner with other automakers. Huh, huh, huh. The National Automobile Dealers Association had no immediate comment. Well, that NADA, they better count their blessings and they better, they better count their, their, their signals because they're not going to be around long. They're not going to be an association anymore. Chuck, I just can't do it. I, I can't figure out how I'm going to buy a car on Amazon. And, of course, they said you can finance it with Amazon. Is Amazon going to be a little more lenient? Are they going to be, are they going to be honest? Every time we, how many times have I told you people about you go with the Toyota credit or you go with Honda, credit and they're they they're 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 bailing out on you. They're yeah. They're they're taking your dough on, on a bad premise. I, and especially if you're a lower income person, 
They can move whatever they want as long as they keep that payment right. at your maximum. My maximum payment I can make is $700. Oh, we can fix that. Right. Give you a 10-year mortgage, and we're going to throw in all this extra stuff that you don't need. 18% interest. Yeah, and... but now I can do that. Yeah. I can get away with it. Besides, why wouldn't you want to borrow from your bank to buy a car? What happened to going to the bank? Or shop shop around a little bit. Shop shop the interest rates. I mean, the interest yeah. rates right now are 9%. Yeah. That's a little stiff. That's why real estate is down and cars are down a little bit. And it'll come around again. It's got to. Well, it's going to come around next year for sure. We will get through this. But it's not going to be pretty. I don't know. I uh, Am I buying a car on Amazon? Me? No. I have some younger friends that I'm sure will buy a car on Amazon. I'm sure they're dying to buy a car on Amazon because it's so cool. What did you just do with your phone? I just ordered a car. Come on, that's not cool. That's stupid, but they don't know it that way. They just know if they did it with their phone, it's cool. And I don't think that's going to wash. Let me just tell you, you can't order a car with your phone. You just can't. North Volt, that's a company, is developing a cobalt-free battery that could power future electric vehicles. They're still working on that battery problem, and they need a solid-state battery, trust me. Or they need to just scrap the electric cars and go hydrogen. They're not going to scrap them. They're going to, the electric cars are always going to be a part of our life. We're going to have fuel cells and electricity, and we're going to be building infrastructure, but it's not going to be anything like the government thinks it's going to be. Because they're not telling us what to do for nothing. I'm just telling you. Most Americans will not, will not accept it. While the first sodium ion cells are designed primarily for energy storage, coming generations may be able to deliver higher energy density for electric mobility. Our sodium ion technology delivers the performance required to enable energy storage with longer duration than the alternative battery chemistries at a lower cost, CEO Peter Carlson said in a statement. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, battery makers are racing to commercialize new technologies. Of course they are. Including next generation anode, solid state, and sodium ion batteries to power electric vehicles more cheaply and efficiently. How about safely? How come nobody ever talks about safely? How come nobody ever talks about infrastructure? Because they're told not to. The government will not let them talk about the problems with electric cars. You get somebody that writes a blog or something on the internet against electric cars, it, it, it's gone, you never see it again, and you never hear from him again. So you tell me what's going on. We have to go electric by 2030, all electric, the entire, the entire country, because the government says so. I wonder who's paying them. Make sure that happens. Ugh. Well, some of the suppliers in our business are very upset about Chinese suppliers. Trade, the Trade Association warns that Mexico will provide a workaround for Chinese companies, and they have. Here's the deal. Automotive companies from China are using Mexico as a backdoor to the U.S. market, undermining the industry in Canada and the United States. Canada's leading supplier, Association Warns. That's Canada is the one that's all over this right now. For, for some reason, we're not we're not challenging China. We don't challenge China on nothing. We let them do whatever they want. But they're they're buttoning on our. They're getting out of paying a tariff. Here we go. An assertive series of strategic moves by Chinese state-owned and controlled interests within the North American automotive market through Mexico threatened to displace market-driven industry players, said Flavo Volpe, president of the Automotive Parts Manufacturers Association. He called it a displacement strategy by Chinese manufacturers le leveraging state ownership and control to gain significant leverage whenever or within North America over regional investors, including some of the established auto suppliers Volpe's association represents. Uh-oh. While we are sleeping, Chinese entities are positioning themselves through direct investment and market expansion in Mexico to displace market-driven players in the North American 
Chamber of Commerce event. A bipartisan, bipartisan group of U.S. lawmakers subsequently penned a letter to the U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai, encouraged her to boost the 25% tariff on vehicle on vehicles from companies in China and investigate ways to prevent Chinese companies from exporting into the United States from Mexico. Because we have no tariff with Mexico. They, according to the, the new agreement, the NAGA or whatever. NAFTA. NAFTA. That's NAFTA. It. Yeah. The letter said that the United States must also be prepared to address the coming wave of Chinese vehicles that will be exported from our other trading partners, such as Mexico, such as Mexico, as Chinese automakers look look to strategically establish operations outside of China to take advantage of a preferential of preferential access to the U.S. market through our free free trade agreements. In other words, we don't have a free trade agreement with China. They pay twenty five percent now, just like originally China was paying like. 5 or 10% and America was sent, spending 25% to send a car to China. So on every Buick we sold over there, we paid 25%. That's why Elon Musk went over there and built a plant. Okay, smart move. The, uh, but there is no, there is no uh, tariff with, with Mexico. So China goes to Mexico and starts building parts and having manufacturing going on down there. And they can ship those parts to the United States and get away with it. And not pay anything. That's just a little bit dippy.